was that weird the way that I said that 20 years pass by and she ends up kind of helping that son that she doesn't know that she has if you haven't guessed that woman is Valerie welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is Elaine but you can always always call me Ellie actually I do prefer it and today I have dun, 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 dun. <laughs> what was that I have a review for you guys I mentioned that I was going to try and do the reviews detailed more detailed and I have a very special book I am obsessed with this book and I really want to review it. I'm really excited about it. The book that I'm going to be talking about today is The Beautiful Ones and Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Thank you very much for writing this book. It was a pleasure to read it. Now, before starting with the review, I have some things to say. First, a lot of people have reviewed this book and a lot of people say that it is a soap opera and they're not wrong, it is. Now, one of the things that we have to understand about a soap opera is one, they're very dramatic, <laughs> very dramatic, extremely dramatic, but that's the way that it's supposed to be. Soap operas are created to take your mind out of things and believe me, when you are looking at someone fighting together, daughter or son back because they put her in a asylum because one woman who believes that she's the queen of the world wants to be with <laughs> The other woman um, husband or lover put her there and it is so traumatic and she becomes crazy and she doesn't even know if it's real or not that she has a son and then 20 years pass by and she ends up kind of helping that son that she doesn't know that she has and the husband now believes that she's having an affair because he's a misogynistic toxic man and at the end everything is very well done and happy everyone is happy everyone is well and believe me you're not going to be thinking about your broke wallet or paying rent or paying your insurance when you're watching a novella or soap opera they are a big part of the latino uh, culture and that is okay so when something is described to be a soap opera it's not something bad it's just something different now, one of the things that I really love about this book is that this is a soap opera combined with Jane Austen. I think Sylvia Moreno Garcia went up to Jane Austen and told her, Girl, I love your books. I love everything about you. But you know what? You need a little bit more of spice. You should have a Latino in your, you know, <laughs> in your books. You should have something that is Latino related. I don't know. She just... I don't know how she did it but you can think that this book is only a soap opera and you would be completely wrong. This is Pride Paradise slash Maria La del Barrio. This is what it is. Or I don't know Emma, Emma slash Betty La Fea. I don't know what to tell you that's what it is. We're not lying to ourselves. I mean by us I mean the people who loved this book. We're just embracing it. It's something new. So the main character, Antonina, or Nina, which is easier, Nina is a country girl and she has one skill, which is telekinesis. She can move things with her mind and all of that. So she decides to go to the city, which is in a country that no one actually says what country it is. So I would say half French, half England. <laughs> It, it doesn't specify. In the book, they never tell you what country they're from. So she goes for spring to her cousin's house um, to stay there. And this cousin, Guy Tan, I think that's how you say his name, he's married to Valerie. Now, Valerie is going to be a very important character, so remember her. Another main character is going to be Hector. And Hector is a man who is very rich. For what the book says he's not a nobleman but he has a lot of money he performs in a theater because he does have just as Tina the telekinesis skill the shady part of the book is that Antonina doesn't know and no one actually knows but Hector comes back from 
traveling for a really long time because he wanted to recuperate or come back or win back a woman a woman that he was in love with when he was younger and she promised that she was going to wait for him but she didn't do that she got married and so Hector came back to see if now that he has money and he can give her everything that she actually need she can come back with him and of course if you haven't guessed that woman is Valerie Valerie had a affair with Hector when they were younger they were engaged for a brief time and what can I say Valerie is a bitch I mean I'm sorry she's just a bitch I hate her she is a very good villain <laughs> she's the best villain that I have read in a long long time for my review I'm going to be using the call pile method because I have read that it is a very good method to review a book and not being biased. I'm going to leave the information of who created that method down below in the description. So the Cowboy method is supposed to be an acronym for characters, atmosphere, writing style, plot, intrigue, logic, relationship, and enjoyment. So the Carl Paul method, how it works, is that you have to give it a rating to every single aspect, so characters, plot, or whatever, and then after that you have to divide that by the number of, of points that you have. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points, so I'm going to give it a rate to every single point from one to ten, and then that I'm going to divide it by the seven points. So let's start with the characters. So the characters that I care about are Antonina, Hector, and Valerie. The characters are very well developed. You get to know them very deeply. You get to see how they change from the beginning of the book to the end. And one of the things that I really enjoy is that the author makes you look at each character from each other's perspective, but also from the narrator's perspective and how they really are. So in the beginning of the book, for example, Valerie seems to be this angelic, good person who she had to get married to another person that she didn't want to get married to and she left behind her lover and she's very, I wouldn't say sad because of it, but she's not happy in her life. She has a lot of um, things that she wanted to do and she didn't do but at the same time you don't see her um like regretting her decision on the other hand Hector or Hector 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 I don't know how to say I mean Hector I don't know Hector Hector you see him as a person who is who has a goal he wants Valerie back he wants to take her away from there he went to another city to another country he made a lot of money just to get back to Valerie and when I say get back I don't mean to make her suffer because she made him suffer I'm more I'm talking more about getting her back to take her with him that's what he has in his mind all the time Valerie Valerie he doesn't leave because he's thinking about Valerie and everything he does he does because of Valerie and at the same time that same thing the doing everything because of Valerie ends up hurting Antonina which is something that he didn't actually want to do because he's not a bad guy now Antonina you see her as a very immature person in the beginning and towards the middle or half um the book and towards the end you understand that she's just not immature she's just young she hasn't had the first heartbreak she hasn't had anything at all to learn she has suffered a lot of bullying and a lot of um rejection from the people in their country house or village because she had this she has this skill that is not normal and that people don't see it well um in a woman so this is one of the things that really bother me about the book or not the book but the society that the book was set in 
that is so perfectly okay for Hector or any other man to be performing in a theater the skill they saw it as something magnificent but when Antonina or Nina used her skill and tried to show off her skill because uh, hello it's telekinesis of course I'm going to be taking things out of shells and make everything float with my mind they saw it as something bad and that a woman shouldn't do so again I think that even if we're reading something that it can come off as paranormal we see that in society all the time and that is one of the reasons why this book is magnificent and beautiful and I think that you should read it. Atmosphere. Again like I said the country in which the book is setting or the story is setting is never specified so I think that I like that a lot because if I imagine England of course all of the Latino culture that I feel in the book <laughs> Um, it wouldn't come to my mind like I wouldn't be able to imagine that because they told me already that it was set on England or Paris or France or anything like that so I really enjoyed that they didn't mention a country the author describes every scene very well but she doesn't center that much on what surrounds the characters more about what the characters are feeling saying doing and what affects the characters she doesn't start describing a house and everything inside of a house and whatever it's just when it pertains to what the characters are or how they are for example when she one of the scenes that you can see this is that Hector goes to Valerie's house and he starts to look at the paintings and the furniture and he sees how everything makes him remember Valerie because she was the one who decorated the room. The writing style was so so easy to understand. I think one of the things that people are going to enjoy about this book is that the author writes small chapters so it seems like you're going really fast but you're just reading chapters but it seems like they're ending sooner so I think that makes you want to read the other one real quick like oh, okay I'm going to read it just for five minutes and then you read and finish the chapter and you want to keep and keep reading the plot the, I love the plot in the beginning I thought that I was going to hate the paranormal side of it the plot again was really dramatic and tragic and <laughs> it was nice they had the struggles which they must have they had their nice moments and cold moments of the two main characters Hector and Antonina talking and getting to know each other it didn't went fast also they didn't fall in love um, since the first time that they met which I really hate I hate when two people just look at each other and they know that they are going to be together forever that's all such crap I don't believe in that. Um, I like them in some books but not all of them. So I really liked that the author gave us time to fall in love with the characters as individuals and also uh, with them together as a couple. The intrigue. Oh, what can I say about the intrigue? When I tell you that Valerie is the best villain that I have read in a while, I'm not lying. I think that the thing is that she seems good in the beginning she doesn't seem as a as a very good splendid person but she doesn't seem as bad as she is and it doesn't go from good to crazy you can see the actual stages so you never know what Valerie is going to do uh, in one moment she can seem very worried and maternal towards Antonina and then at the next she is prioritizing herself instead of Antonina and being cruel even um, just because of jealousy and not even jealousy it's just that she wanted to be loved I think that's the main issue with Valerie is that she wanted everyone or at least someone to love her a lot like until that person would die for her but she wouldn't give back the logic I understood everything it was nice everything happened for a reason in the book it wasn't like oh yeah Valerie is crazy and he's going to kill you or wants to kill everyone but like just because no everything had its time and space everything happened for a reason there was a cause and effect 
it was magnificent. You understood why people did what they did. You understood why Hector, um, <laughs> I cannot tell you what he did, but you can understand every single character and what they do, what they do, how the way that they reason, the way that they think and the way that they do things and why they did things in the past. So it's not like they just give you something and you have to accept it. You understand why the character is acting and thinking and doing and saying the things that um, they are. Enjoyment. I enjoyed this book a whole lot. <laughs> it was amazing. It was so good. I didn't have any moments where I was like, oh, this is boring. I'm going to DNF this book. I just don't want to keep reading. There was a chapter that I had to stop reading because I felt like I was going to cry because of anger. I was so angry with Valerie and I wanted to, I wanted her to like die already. I don't know. It felt really, I felt really uh, impotent to the fact that I couldn't do anything because I'm not inside of the book. The characters. I really enjoyed the characters again, so I'm going to give it a eight and a half. Yeah, I'm going to give it a eight and a half because the other characters in the book, they were not as developed and there were parts where I didn't understand what was happening with the other ones. And even though they're not important to me, that doesn't mean that they're not important for everyone else. So I think that they should have been developed a little bit more. But yeah, 8.5 for the characters. Atmosphere. I think that a 7 because I would like to have seen a little bit more of construction when it came to the world involving or evolving around our characters. So 7. Then the writing style, I think that a 9, it was really good. There were times where I felt like the ideas were not being finished, but that didn't happen that often. Then the plot, it was amazingly good, so 9. The intrigue was amazing, so 9. Then logic and relationships. Um, everything was pretty much logic. I understood everything, like I said. Nothing happened because of nothing there was always cause and effect and resolution so yeah i think it was really good so i'm going to give it eight and a half just because again the other characters outside from hector antonina and valerie they weren't developed that much so the things that they do and the relationships that they had it didn't actually make sense sometimes to me enjoyment i'm going to give it nine and I'm going to divide that by 7. 8.5. Okay, so 8.5 is not a bad rating. And I think that this book is actually an 8 point, maybe a 9. I'm going to give it a 9 just because I want to. Yeah, this book deserves a 9. So yeah, I think that it is a magnificent book that everyone should read it. If you're Latino and you like um, Jane Austen, if you like... The Bronte Sisters, if you like Regency, Bridget and Julia Quinn, you should definitely read this book. It is very nice to feel yourself in a book. Was that weird the way that I said that? So yeah, that was the review for The Beautiful Ones. If you guys have any questions, if you want more from this book, I'm happy to talk more about it. I just need maybe to know the questions that you guys have at the end of the book one of the things that i really like is that it has a lot of questions for people to discuss i think this is a book that would be very very well used for a book club and they have already the questions in the back also the cover what happened here this is amazing i sing so badly but i do not care my friends <laughs> that was everything then i do hope that you guys enjoyed the review i think that i was a little bit um anxious about these reviews the first time that i'm using call pile uh, method but i really really enjoyed it and it gave me pointers to what to talk about which is really nice see you very soon bye